There is a piece of technology that I know your children have never used. But it was the first piece of technology that I was ever involved in building. Actually, now that I reflect on it, it was also the last piece of technology that I was ever involved in building. I was in elementary school. My next door neighbor, Jack, and I created two identical devices that were made with a bulb taken from a flashlight battery, flashlight light bulb, flashlight, a D battery, and a paper clip. And we put one of these contraptions in the bedroom in my home, and we put another one of these contraptions in the bedroom at his home. And then we strung speaker wire from my bedroom across the side of my house, over my roof, across the driveway, down the side of his house, into his bedroom. And we hooked up one contraption to one end of the speaker wire and the other one to the other in our bedroom. And by pressing on the clip toward the battery, I could light up the light in Jack's house and he could light up the light in my house. Now I know, I can feel it, I can feel the suspense in this room. It's mounting. What with this high-tech, sophisticated piece of machinery that we created? Here's a hint. It involved a code with dots and dashes, which we use to communicate. Your kids still have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. It was Morse code. We had built a telegraph. Now, I have to confess, I do not recall the first message that Jack and I exchanged, but I did look up the first message ever sent by telegraph. It was sent by Morse code, May 24th, 1844. Samuel Morse quoted, of all things, the Torah. Here was the message. What hath God wrought? What hath God wrought? It's from the book of Numbers, and it expressed an excitement about this new technology of telegraph. But even more so, it expressed a genuine sense of awe, a genuine sense of wonder. Now let me share with you how things have changed. <coughs> The first moon landing was July 20th, 1969. You remember the now famous words of Neil Armstrong when he first set foot on the lunar surface? That's one small, actually let me make it authentic. That's one small step for man. <sighs> one giant leap for mankind. Consider the difference between look what God hath wrought and that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Rabbi Harold Kushner gives me a great insight. The telegraph celebrates what God has done. The moon landing completely omits God. It only acknowledges what humanity has achieved. The Bible, which I believe is the wisest book ever written, the Jewish code to humanity teaches, Reshit Yirat Adonai. The awe of God is the beginning of wisdom. So today, I want to speak with you about living a life with wonder. Living a life with wonder because I believe our lives would be richer in so many ways if we lived with a deeper sense of wonder. Wonder is that amazement that goes beyond appreciation for what human beings can do. Some of you may remember the beginnings of radio, others the beginnings of color of television, and some others color TV, most of us, have seen the creation of the computer from large mainframes to laptops 
And who among us 25 years ago would have imagined for a moment that we could put a telephone in our pocket or our purse and it would be more powerful than a computer which was once the size of a house. And what do most young people say, indeed, what do most of us say when encountering such marvels? Isn't it amazing what technology can do? The irony is, the more technological our society becomes, the more we advance, the more essential is a sense of God and wonder. If you've been on an airplane, this is going to sound familiar to you. About 25 minutes after takeoff, the pilot comes over the public address system and announces, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruising altitude of 37,000 feet. You're welcome to take off your seatbelt sign and move about the cabin. How many times have many of you heard that? And how often for a moment do we stop and think about what's going on? We're seven miles in the air, traveling at a speed of 550 miles an hour in a metal capsule. <laughs> do we feel a sense of wonder or do we just get a little ticked off if our internet is spotty? <laughs> or if they happen to run out of the pretzels we most enjoy. <laughs> or consider something as mundane as grocery shopping. Sometimes a fresh perspective can be helpful here. My friend Leonid grew up in Kishinev in Moldova in the former Soviet Union. He became a refusenik in the 1970s. He went on a hunger strike. He was thrown in jail. And ultimately he was set free. He and I met years later. He has a compelling story, by the way, which is extraordinary. It went from atheism to, are you ready for this, becoming the first Soviet-born ordained conservative rabbi in the United States. He gives a wonderful speech, by the way, from Marx to Moses. It's, it's a great, great title. Anyway, I asked Leonid, who I speak to frequently, I asked him what he did on his very first day in the free world. You know what he did? He went into a supermarket. He was absolutely mesmerized. He told me he spent four hours just walking around. You see, in Kishinev, he would wait outside a tiny cheese market for two hours, typically, in the hopes of getting some cheese. And then he'd go to another small market, the meat market, in the hopes of getting some meat. The next time we're in a supermarket, let's take a minute and let's also make sure our children take a minute to simply take it in. Milk, you want non-fat, 1%, 2%. Whole milk, half and half, cream, organic milk, chocolate milk, buttermilk, lactose-free milk, and then there's milk that isn't milk. There's almond milk. <laughs> There's soy milk, coconut milk, rice milk, cashew milk, and I recently learned something called hemp milk. Don't ask me. I have no idea what it's used for, probably medicinal. <laughs> By the way, it's great to have high expectations for airlines and for supermarkets in general. It shows we have high standards. It encourages progress. What I'm suggesting is that we step back and realize exactly what's in front of us, whether it's on the plane or in the market, and take it in with a sense of wonder. It's important in life to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. If we see the extraordinary in the ordinary, we view the world differently. We have greater appreciation. And that is a key to happiness. One cannot be happy without appreciation. And if we see the extraordinary in the ordinary, we'll see the world with more excitement and we'll notice things we never noticed before. 
If you have children or grandchildren, do you remember that sense of wonder when they were first born? The creation of life is worthy of wonder, but that wonder for your children should be there all the time because life is recreated all the time. If you have young children at home or grandchildren, every day when they wake up, we should remember that that little guy or that little girl was created by God and has the Spirit of God in them. And that is worthy of wonder. And when they grow up and hopefully become responsible adults and they go out of the house, when you see them again, when they visit or you visit them, that's worthy of wonder. And we should all have wonder at the human spirit. Many members of our congregation, indeed many of you in this room right now, were not born here. You left the country of your birth. You left your language. You left your culture. Some of you left families. Others left their livelihoods. And you recreated yourselves. When you were living in your home country, if someone had suggested to you in 5779, in 2018, that you would be sitting in a synagogue on the top of a mountaintop on Rosh Hashanah, you would have likely said, not in my wildest dreams. You are living that which was beyond your wildest dreams. And that should be a sense of wonder. I used to frequently ask Rabbi Zeldin, Allah va shalom, may his memory be a blessing. Did you ever imagine this? And he would always say to me, David, never. I pinch myself. When do we stop pinching ourselves? Why should we stop pinching ourselves? You who came here never would have dreamed it. You're living your wildest dreams. Feel a sense of wonder. And think of others, Mike, for example, who may have overcome unimaginable loss. they are Holocaust survivors who loved again and lived a deep sense of satisfaction in their lives. Elie Wiesel makes the point about Adam and Eve. He says, you know, it's one thing to begin, but it's a much greater thing to begin again after everything you have had has been taken from you. I suspect many of you have met someone who has suffered tremendous loss. Indeed, I know some of you, unfortunately, have experienced such loss. And despite disappointments, defeats, sometimes tragedy, despite the scars, you have managed to go on living. Some of you found, indeed many of you found, that God gave your soul a strength far more than you ever would have imagined. Seemingly ordinary people who found the strength to overcome extraordinary obstacles, and that strength should be a source of wonder. And I also know that there are people in this room today dealing with difficult challenges at this very moment. Some of you have lost someone you love. For others, life has thrown you a big personal curveball. Some here may be facing health problems, others family issues. Some of you had dreams of a future that are broken, golden years that aren't looking the way you expected. I know for many, life seems uncertain and you're scared and you feel at times overwhelmed. Without minimizing your pain one iota, I want you to know that you may very well find people and other sources of joy that you never would have expected in your life. I have seen it and I think you have seen it too. God doesn't promise any of us that life will be easy or that life will even be fair. What God does promise is that when life is tough, God will be beside you as a source of hope and a source of courage. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel wrote, the beginning of our happiness lies in the understanding that life without wonder is not worth living. What we lack, he wrote, is not a will to believe, 
but a will to wonder. Rabbi Heschel understood the role religion can play. He wrote, wonder is the chief characteristic of the religious man's attitude towards history and nature. He is so right. Judaism can bring great wonder to the way we see our world. Every Friday night, when we recite the full Kiddush prayer, the prayer contains two of the most awe-inspiring moments in world history. Zikharon lemaaseh reshit, that God created the world, and Zechel Litziat Mitzrayim, that God took our people out of Egypt. The very first words we are to recite at the Shabbat table remind us of God's creation and that God took us out of Egypt. Those words are meant to elicit wonder every week. Indeed, the first words a Jew is supposed to say every morning, We thank God for restoring our soul to us. We thank God for the gift of life. Traditionally, we say that prayer before we even get out of bed because simply waking up is worthy of wonder. And Judaism's impact on humanity is worthy of wonder. 4,000 years ago, God approaches Abraham and he tells Abraham to leave his home, leave his relatives, leave his father's house to go to another land. And God promises Abraham that he's going to be the father of a great nation. And that is exactly what happened. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, come the Jewish people. And from this people, our people, Judaism shaped the Western world. America and the Western world were founded on the values of Judeo-Christian of the Judeo-Christian ideals founded in the Bible. The influence of Judaism on humanity is worthy of wonder. Israel, the existence of Israel is worthy of wonder. I know that often on Yamim Norahim on the high holidays, I reference Israel, sometimes briefly, and I make no apology for it. I do it for one primary reason. I don't want our children, and I don't want us to take Israel for granted. I want us to remember that for 2,000 years, our people prayed and hoped and died for the dream that Israel would be one day returned to the Jewish people, and we are living at that moment in history. Whether you embrace Israel's policies, whether you grapple with Israel's policy, whether you reject some of Israel's policies, that's fine. But what I hope we can all agree on is that the existence of the state of Israel and a thriving Israel is worthy of wonder. If you live with wonder, it's far more likely you will feel the presence of God in your life. For the last 12 years, every other Thursday, I've had the real privilege of studying with members of this congregation. We study the Torah, and the issue of God comes up. How do I have faith in God? How do I convince my child or my children there's a God? You know what I've come to realize? Kushner put it here too again, Rabbi Kushner. You don't really talk someone into believing in God. So rather than asking, how can I be convinced that there is a God or how can I convince my child that there is a God? Instead, last ask this question, and I say this, I literally believe this can be life altering. Instead of asking, is there a God? Ask this question. How can I recognize God when God is there? How can I realize it when I am seeing, indeed experiencing God's presence? If you live with wonder, you are far more likely to feel that you are experiencing the presence of God. My friends, we are entering a new year. The high holidays give us the gift of reflecting on the year gone by and to think about how we want to live in this coming year. 
I chose to speak about this topic for one primary reason, in the hope that we will all live our lives with a greater sense of wonder and because I believe it will lead to a deeper and a richer life. Wonder makes us human. Wonder brings humility. Wonder gives us the ability to appreciate beauty in the world. And wonder is a source of daily joy. If you live with greater wonder, you will feel God's presence. You will have a deeper sense of gratitude. Wonder makes life much more exciting and it makes us more interesting and brings greater equanimity. Our days will be more intense and ironically, our days will be lighter and we will undoubtedly be happier as we take this journey of life. And that is my prayer for you. May God inscribe each of you in the book of life for the coming year. A year filled, a year filled with good health and with joy, with times of celebration and with moments of wonder. And maybe a year that is filled with blessings beyond measure for you and for all whom you love. Amen.